welcome everybody for coming out. Appreciate everybody for coming out. My name is Chase Minifield. This is the Who's Where podcast. Uh, I'm a UVA alum, 2010, 2011, 2010. Uh, you know, UVA football, Washington Redskins, slash commanders, whatever you want to call them. Current CEO and founder of Helping Hands at Easy Turn. Um, we have amazing guests coming on board, but I'm your host tonight and my co-host, Max Million. What's up, man? What's up, guys? How you doing? 2011, I played with Chase. Uh, he grabbed me three and a half, so that's why he's in 2010. That's cool. Uh, some of us know more. Um, but yeah, founder of uh, Sabre Construction, a movie company in Charleston called Moving Forward. But we appreciate everyone coming out and excited for it for today for our second live podcast event. So before we introduce our guest today, uh, I'd like to thank our partner for the event, UVA Clubs Global Network, Joshua and Cindy. Appreciate you guys. If you give them a hand, appreciate it. <laughs> Things, the way I like to do things is, you know, I come from a football background. We come out the smoke. Intros is the most important part of the game in my mind. You know what I'm saying? When I come out of the smoke, it's a wrap, right? Like, it's, a, it's something different. When you, I don't know. We got a couple football players in here, but when that smoke gets you at Scott Stadium, right, it's a, it's a little different. It's a little different. So I take the intro serious. I take the intro serious. So when I do these intros, when I intro my guests, I like a little drum roll, you know what I'm saying? A little something like that on the table. But we need to make sure that the energy is right. If the energy is not right from the beginning, it's a wrap. I actually got a story about that. One time, one time, we came out of Scott Stadium and um, nobody told us that Cab Man fell off the horse. <laughs> Cab Man fell off the horse, so we ended up getting rah-rah, you know what I'm saying, we about to go. And I was like, I told her, I said, after the game was over, I'm watching Sports Center, and we on Sports Center, not top 10. Because Cab Man done fell off the horse before the game. The next day I go to Coach Lynn, I said, why didn't nobody tell us that? You know what I'm saying? Because that's bad. So I appreciate you guys. So I'm going to say, and now for our first guest, and while I'm saying that now for our first guest, I want you guys to just bang on the table. Just give me a little quick drum roll. Uh, I don't know if it's LFC, uh, you know, 
kind of just told my story and kind of just had the tough transition, kind of moving on and you know hanging up cleats. I think a lot of athletes and not just football players, but a lot of athletes in general have that you know tough time. So the Peach Forty Project kind of just aims to help student athletes uh, who you know just finished graduating and transitioning to from sports, as well as professional athletes and mainly undrafted free agents. Uh, the reason I say undrafted free agents. Over about 300 of them would be signed every single year. Uh, realistically, maybe 20 will make the team, and maybe another 20 to 30 will play on the practice squad. Probably got over 200, uh, close to 300 players that just move on, you know, left without playing the sport they love and known for so long. So when did you start this? Uh, and why? And give me the why too. The why? Because uh, in 2021, uh, I didn't know what to do next. I was lost, I was on the couch, uh, kind of just in limbo, and kind of just bounced around, and yeah, no one really was there, or I didn't really know who to reach out to, nobody really helped me, the guy who was next. That makes sense, man. Uh, what, when did you start? I started it, uh, we're still uh, running from the ground up, but uh, you could say beginning of August. Okay. Congratulations, man, for getting that going. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. What, what kind of services do you guys run? Financial services, like, you know, the next phase so, of your life services? The next phase of your life service. So, uh, you know, an athlete reaches out. Uh, we try to go and uh, partner with universities and, you know, try to reach out to other athlete guys. And basically, you know, those who are looking for that next move, that next transition to a new career, we have to apply that. Sounds good. Uh, so I call him Ben, that's who I'm talking to. I'm talking to, uh, to this guy right here. Um, so when, when did you start? What is Vertex Performance and, and when did you start and why did you start? Absolutely. So uh, Vertex Performance is essentially like a one-stop shop concept. It pretty much took sports, fitness, academics, and mentorship, and medicine. And I was really proud to try to get some guys in the world that we played on. I uh, thought the coolest thing in the world was to try to get the kids a chance to uh, get to to give kids a chance to, uh, you know, to really learn and benefit and start soon. Don't wait until you become a college or a professional athlete. Uh, so we kind of just created uh, the system in place and you know, there's a lot of business around it. It's really passionate and uh, the wife right and I, it's uh, something we want to leave a legacy. You know, something for our kids get for future generations. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let's just run it back. We know what they're doing now. Companies uh, in different spaces, but they both have a, a strong reason for starting their companies. Um, why, where are you from? Where are you guys from? Where are you from, Chris? Um, it's a hard question, man. I moved around so long, so much when I was a kid, but uh, I'm gonna claim Newport News. Newport News, yeah. Newport and Norfolk. Okay. Uh, then Chesapeake. Okay. Then a little bit of Norfolk. I mean, back to Norfolk, and then I moved back to Newport News. What about you, Dave? Where are you from, Fayetteville? 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 High school, Atlanta. Shores. Okay. Uh, did you follow, did you guys follow UVA growing up at all? I'll uh, be real, no, I did not. Uh, I like to tell people the first time UVA came at home in my high school to recruit me, I didn't know anything about them. I just seen ACC on the coach's jacket. ACC. That's enough. I, I, I would say the same. I, mean, I, I was a pretty good baseball prospect coming out, so I was a fellowship and fixing. And, you know, some of the schools in the UVA kind of came into the mix, and I just kind of fell in love with the environment and took more visiting. UVA was for me. That makes sense. I know, Max, did you follow UVA? Where are you from, Seven Oak Creek? Oh, yeah, I followed UVA growing up, man. UVA was, I came here for the first time when I was like, I think 12 years old, probably. Came to a game, came to a cross game that's not football. Uh, kind of fell in love with the program, and then it was lucky enough to get a scholarship in high school. And the coach point that was the one recruited me, and they was a rap. I mean, he was just that guy. Like for you, you didn't know about UVA. Uh, what made you choose to come? Um, it was either choose Noble State or go to UVA. I was not having recruited. Uh, they offered me a scholarship two weeks before National Saturday. Okay. Uh, 
wow, wow, that's awesome, man. Congratulations on your success off the hat. So, for sure. Uh, ben, what about you? Uh, for me, it was kind of uh, it was a little different journey for me. I was playing baseball. I stopped playing my uh, junior year because I focused on. I mean, I stopped playing football and focused on baseball. I was five games into the season. I kind of got the itch again. And I went back and I played the last five games of football. I wasn't even really planning on playing it. And then uh, I remember Coach Bro and uh, it was Mike Bro who came in recruiting me. Came to the campus, like I said, the uh, first visit, just being in the stadium, and I just kind of wild. I was more impressed with how like when he was kind of preaching on the, on the linebacker side, the defensive side, and, and when they came out to play baseball and football, I pretty much had to do it. I had to take that. Um, so, the one interesting thing about Ben is he's being a little modest right now, but he chose to play football halfway through the football season his senior year. And the rumor has it he had like 35 tackles, you know what I'm saying, 20 sacks, and like some crazy numbers in one single game, and then all of a sudden you got offers. Is that what happened? Yeah, that's a, that's a funny story. So, you know, um, UVA, like I'm not, I know what you're talking about, but everybody told you the story. So, I, I wasn't from the area, so nobody really knew who I was. I, I didn't play my children a year. My sophomore year, I, I led the region to tackle, I had a couple of 30 tackles. Junior year, didn't play at all, so I came to senior year. I was like, what is it here? And uh, we played against one of the top teams in the, uh, in the area. I think I had like 30 tackles, uh, two touchdowns, probably 200 yards receiving. I don't know, a couple big hits. And uh, the coach called, he's like, you gotta go check this guy out. That's kind of how I, you know, came into the picture. That's always interesting to hear how people got recruited, man. What about, what was your story? How'd you end up thinking? Now it's nice like that. <laughs> Year, had a really good year, and then, uh, like I said, Point Jackson Coach Bill came down, saw a couple games, and then all three of his and then and the rest of history pretty much. The rest of history. You get a stream back on? Oh, it's great. I got you. That's what your job is to be. Oh, awesome. Um, but yeah, so since you get to UVA, right? You all get to UVA. Um, from my experience, Coach let you know, like, this is a, this is, this is your student athlete first. You know what I'm saying? UVA very strict in academics and space like that. So, what did you choose to study and why did you choose to study? Um, initially, I wanted to go foreign affairs. Um, you know, I tried that out for a year and a half. Uh, I didn't think it was really for me. Uh, you know, not gonna lie, I think I was kind of all money in football, then I switched it to American studies, it was way easier to schedule. And uh, academically, the major I think I wanted to do, business, just wasn't available at the time. The comp school, the, the, the comp school, um, they use comp school for recruitment, just so everybody knows. <laughs> I 
you know, I was a student athlete first. Uh, so that's an interesting concept because, you know, ultimately we get first pick, they say we get first pick in classes, right? Um, but do you feel like you made, it was a hindrance to actually be an athlete versus your academics? I'll, I'll, I'll say yeah. I mean, the, the, the timing of the class, like I said, if we had practice like the regiment that we had, it was true. It was, um, if you wanted to take that class, you had to look at the workouts, you had to practice two four hour practice and study all that. Sometimes it was kind of challenging. What about you, Uh Definitely. Uh, I don't know, for me, uh, I felt like you kind of had to just pick one or the other. Uh, you wanted to be you know, really successful in one area, you kind of had to drift off in the other. Uh, between academics, social life, and athletics. Uh, no way you can do all three. Um, very few guys I've come across in four years last year actually can do all three and let them on two. So essentially, you know, what you guys are, you guys are both presidents of the company. Um, you know, you both are high athletes at the highest level. What, what did you, I don't, I don't want to state this question, um, like, what you learned as being an athlete, did that actually teach you more from life after sports? Or, did it, or do you think it hurt you? Life after I think it taught me uh, more of a life after sports. And the reason I say that, uh, as an athlete, there are times in your career you're going to fail. And you know, all about being an athlete is how you're going to respond to failure, how you're going to respond to the next play. You know, uh, you know, with life, I like to say the real world. Uh, life is going to test you. Life is going to try to knock you out. Um, football taught me a lot of things, how to fight adversity. And, uh, I think that's one thing that made me uh, mentally tough. Learned, I learned that from football, I translated it into real life. Sounds like big. That's good. Now, I always don't have anything else to add. I mean, for my mental toughness, uh, I think I'll add like, uh, preparation. You know, uh, I remember Coach Pro saying, you need to prepare to prepare to win and prepare to fail. You know, if you don't study, if you don't actually prepare, if you're not ready to, to perform, you can't expect to actually uh, overcome those challenges. So I think I really put a lot of that to sports. Like Chris said, just perseverance, getting in the battle through, deal with those challenging times, and uh, find a way to make it happen. And what about you, Max? Did, uh, did being an athlete actually hinder your post-sports post career? I don't think it hindered my post-sports career. I think the only thing that might have hindered it is the, the fact that I didn't take some classes that I probably shouldn't have taken. So I probably took a little bit easier schedule. Um, you know, I thought uh, the first thing we get on campus the summer session, we're there like two months before we got to start. It's pretty much 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. You're at the football stadium or at A class. And then when school starts, uh, you have 5 a.m. practice about 8 a.m. You take class from 8 to 12, 8 to 1, and then your meetings 2 to 6. And then if you have to be studying all, you'll study all of that. So the classes you can take are pretty limited, but you know they say you can take whatever class you want. And after you practice, you have to practice their quote unquote optional. But their favorite line was, so it's playing time. So uh, easy to choose. So I would say that, no, I wouldn't say hitters, but they're definitely, you know, when you're in it, you know, you're young, you're new, you're hungry, uh, you're not really thinking about, well, should I skip practice, take this class, and like that, that be about 10 years. And I think that's the biggest thing that I wish I knew, you know, outside of 2020. But there are a couple classes I think would help me just propel myself quicker if I had known that, you know, five, 10 years out, I definitely have to be mental for this to help. So. So we started this podcast because we wanted to improve the network of University of Virginia. And I know that was one of the big things that I came to get for was, you know, my dad told me, he was like, um, you know, okay, you play football, you have a successful career, but what about the next 20 to 30 years of your life? What about the next 40 years of your life, all right? Um, and he said, but the, the school that I was considering, University of Virginia gave you the best network after you're done, and you need some assistance, and you need some mentorship in certain spaces. So, how was it for you guys as far as being an athlete on campus and being able to leverage the UVA network? Uh, that's kind of one of my biggest regrets uh, when I actually attended here. I don't think I took full advantage of that. Uh, like I said, socially, uh, I kind of was to myself, and when I graduated, kind of matured and just learned some life lessons. I finally realized, like, wow, like uh, for four or five years I was here, I did not take advantage of that. Uh, I didn't really step outside my realm, outside my comfort zone, try to meet new people, and kind of just branch out more in the world. Absolutely. Uh, relationship building is very important. You know, I still keep in contact with uh, Chase Max and the lady, the network, and they give me a lot of opportunities. You know, we're here now. I want to share our story and testimony. It's a really big blessing for us. Uh, but like I said, I wish I would have understood as I was younger 
how to follow up and follow through and really like touch base and just be a better communicator. It's something I'm working on now. And uh, you know, like I said, it's something to teach the kids and you know, get those guys going in the right direction. Okay, questions, questions, questions. Max, the question guy. Alright, so the first question for you guys, this is to anybody um, that you're looking for any good outgrowth stories. So, um, but uh, I've been, I know you got a couple, Jason, I you got a couple, I might got one or two. But. When I look in the crowd, I try to uh, see who asked that question. I don't know, maybe I want to play with you. <laughs> That's right. Babe, you want to go ahead with some good outgrowth stories, man? I, I, I guess I'll, you know, I'll, I'll grow to be honest. I don't, I don't think we or I, I don't think we're ready for our growth. You know, like, he was a very modest business. He came with that NFL style uh, training. It's this way, it's my way, you know, it's how it's we. He was really teaching a lot of deep things at the time. I didn't really understand. So I guess one of the things really stood out for me, I came to the meeting. Uh, I'm thinking about time. I was downstairs, that's when we had like a little weed and we're playing games and stuff. And I, I came to the meeting thinking I was on time. I'm thinking about watching. I'm very right inside the meeting, everybody's in there. And indeed I was like five minutes early. But here comes Coach Bro, he's sitting up there, like he's actually speaking. And he sat down, uh, and I sat down, and he called me out from everybody. And he said, John, you know, I'm trying to figure out how he said it, man. He was like, but it was more like, same thing, like if you're, if you're early, uh, be, be on time. What did he say? Uh, he said, if, if, if you're early, you're early, be on time. Well, yeah. Be on time. There you go. I remember because he was playing that game when he called you out from everybody. Yeah, he called me out from everybody. So I did. He called me out from everybody. I was on time. I bought the story, but again, same concept. Uh, it taught me a lot of life lessons just in that way. I got a lot of respect. I got a lot of respect for Coach Bro. If Coach Bro wasn't here, I probably wouldn't have been here. Uh, he, he talked to me. He, uh, he coached my dad in the, in the Cleveland Browns. So that was a connection there. Uh, but Coach Bro is the king of the one liner. Like, he got some one liners that like kids still get like, problems about these days. Like, we 33, you know what I'm saying? We grown now. But essentially, like, those are one liners that were said back in the day that people still get roasted about. You know what I'm saying? Uh, during that time. But one of my favorite ones was. Uh, he told a guy that was on the field and he said he was just running the wrong route, running the wrong play. He said, man, you like a golf ball, you like a golf ball in the jungle. And I was like, what's a golf ball in the jungle? He said, you lost out here. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Just like things like that, like, he always has the one line. He has the more, like, some, some uh, PG-13 R-rated versions, but uh, we couldn't feel about that. So, uh, I can't say those right now. But Al one of the smartest football brains I've ever met. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Al Groh. Yeah, I mean, I got a lot of respect for Al Groh, too. I think the, the main thing is he kept guys accountable. Uh, it wasn't kind of I've seen that day as much as I played for. And one of the funny things kind of along with the story is uh, one summer, you know, we weren't doing so good, just wasn't happy with how summer was going. And he basically told guys, like, you know, hey, in the real world, if, if you show up, you listen to your job, you show up, you don't do your job well, you know what I'm saying? You get fired, you can't afford your house, you can't afford, you know, support your family, etc. Um, you know, we weigh in, you had to weigh in, you had to be on your weight. So, you know, if you're overweight, um, the first thing he did was get a clump table. So, you know, you see another professor, uh, the clump, so he had a clump table with a nutritionist. Uh, those guys didn't get eaten the tea. And then guys that weren't, you know, falling through on top of practice, guys that didn't have their grades where they were supposed to be. Um, he called it the, uh, the secondary locker room, I call it, I guess. So our locker room's beautiful, made nice. You know, lockers, names on it, TVs, everything. Um, so the guys that weren't really, you know, going to class, the class checks, guys that weren't, you know, making their times, doing the lifts, everything. He took a lot of stuff out of the locker room and took them to like a back room that was just basically like a concrete square. Take their name up on the wall and put all the stuff in the bag. So like, there was no heat, no AC in there. Uh, I don't know if they got the laundry washed in like we used to. It was bad. So basically, it was, uh, no free lunches. No free lunches. So his mind was, you know, there's no free lunches in this world. And so uh, a lot of people didn't get to see that about bro. You know, a lot of fans might not see that, but he did really care about teaching life skills. And, and one of the things that he talked about was accountability. You know, if you don't show up and do what you are there to do in the real world, you know, you, you don't get a free ride. So that was one of the stories. It was funny, but it was actually good, like, less than that. Here's one more question, then we'll jump back into the, uh, the story. John Davis and uh, Chris Pete's two legends. Yeah, so they, uh, they wanted, you know, what is the biggest lesson you guys have learned from the world of sports to the world of business? Oh, I would say uh, consistency, for sure. Uh, one thing about football, you're not consistent, you're not going to last long, you're not going to be successful in it. Uh, it's probably going to be a short career for you. Uh, 
for me, how I got, uh, as far as I did with football, I was consistent. Uh, I wasn't necessarily the best athlete, the best player, but I did little things over and over and over again, and over until I blew in the face. And that's something a lot of people I played with from high school to college didn't necessarily have, and that carried me a long way. And, you know, you pass our own past football into the real world, consistency is going to take you a longer way uh, than most people will, will uh, you know, yeah, sorry, Yeah, uh, I'd have to say, um, never underestimate your opponent or your competitor. Business is tough. You know, it's just like you, you play a team and you don't think they're that good, they come out and they put some on. Their business the same way. You can have good systems, uh, but you might get out marketing. You might have good people, but they might have a better way to outreach. You know, so I kind of learned over three years, like, you know, never, get, never get too high. Never get too ahead of yourself and never underestimate. There's somebody out there who's going to watch you trying to do better. And uh, so just trying to just stay sharp and uh, you know, focus on what you have to do and be aware of what everybody else is doing as well. Be better. For me, um, what I learned in sports to take to business is how to handle no's. Uh, that's my thing, is how to handle no. Because essentially, when you run your business and you're selling, I get 20 no's, I get probably one yes. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't never take me down. It's kind of like, like what, what, what you guys are saying. But ultimately, when I play corner, defense is back. My, my success rate is supposed to be low. Um, so essentially, I learned that you know it's, it's all about you trying to make the best play that you can make, uh, or the best the opportunity that you can make. Um, but yeah, not being successful, but being successful at the same time is, is, a, is an interesting trait, I would say, I have. I would say I learned that the little things matter. So I think for you know, meeting a lot of college athletes, you realize, you know, in high school we were the we were the best of the best at what we did on our team. And you know, there were a lot of times where, you know, I, I coach jokes, you know, he was asking about this. It's all, you know, the MLB is separated, you know what I'm saying? So it's like the my big system and the MLB, it's the farm system. You know, when I got on when I got drafted at 12, you go play rookie ball. And then the rookie ball season, you're kind of playing with like the current draftees and like some of the older guys have already played. Uh, it was a short season. Uh, it was a cool experience, really blessed. And then, uh, you know, it's like my Chris says, it's an eye opener. You kind of throw it up in it. It's a business. Money comes first in performance. And, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed every second of it. And uh, I was very thankful for my, it was a short lived career, but I was thankful. When did you know that, you know, it's time to move on? Pretty, pretty much. You know, it, it was on. Um, you know, the injuries, you get released, and at that point I just, I was 20, 23, and you know, I had bigger goals, you know, like I had to, I was worried about life after, uh, some of my biggest goals being a great husband, a great father, and a businessman, those were always, before sports, like, those were always the three primary goals, and so when it was done for me, it was easy for me to transition, you know, I hated my plan, but I just think I was moving in a different direction, I just uh, transitioned. Respect, respect. So Max, really, what did you know? that you wouldn't go have, you know, like an NFL type situation, opportunity, a, a professional sport? It was probably when I was a 230 pound fullback in a league that doesn't use fullbacks anymore. Uh, you know, I was grateful, you know, with Coach Coach London and, and uh, you know, Bill Lazer, one of the yeah, best. You didn't want no contact either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill, Bill London, one of the best, uh, Bill Lazer, one of the best soccer sports I've ever played for. But um, yeah, I kind of really, you know, sometimes you gotta be honest with yourself. Um, you know, I'm looking at different guys, uh, you know, I got a call, you know, Giants want me to come up there and, and, and you're trying, I'm looking at Brandon Jacobs, he's 250, playing running back, and they want me 230, half the size of the block for him, like, this, this is not going to work. So, you a receiver fullback. Yeah, pretty much. So, I'm a little bit too slow to play receiver, and I'm a little bit too small to play fullback, so I was kind of in between, and I was just like, uh, draft day happened to be the same day as Foxfield, so, you know, I was at Foxfield's having a good time during draft day, not worrying about this and call myself or not. So, uh, I, knew, I knew the decision early, pretty early on in uh, my senior year that, you know, I just, just wasn't going to make it. I had a great college career. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't regret anything. Um, but, you know, a couple of guys just need to know that hey, I had to look on to the next early. So, um, I didn't, I was going to work for myself. I didn't know what, how, where to get started. Um, the beauty of sports is your regimen your entire life. The downside is once you get out, that regiment's out. And it is, I mean, honestly, it's just scary. I mean, you just come out one day and no one's telling you where to be, you know, what to do, uh, your life path, don't really know what you're working for. So it's kind of crazy. Um, 
And so that's kind of the reason also we chase started this podcast. Like here's a place where athletes who, when you get out in that real world, hey, you know, if there's an avenue that you're interested in, well, here are these people's contact information that have done the package done, and you can kind of contact them and see what they can do to get started. So um, that was probably the hardest part. Was not it wasn't that I knew I wasn't making it. So it was like, man, I, my entire life of 23 years, I had a path that I was going to, and I had people tell me what to do, where to be, and how to do it. And then one day the people just like, good luck. So um, that's that's kind of the gap we're trying to bridge. And that's uh, yeah, even even if you know that you're done, you're ready to hang it up. It's still a, it's still a hard transition. Uh, I can't tell my full transition story, but I did do some episodes on uh, out of 150 something that's a lot. But just a quick thing about like me. Um, nobody can tell me any different that I wasn't going to play in the NFL for 20 years, 15 years, 10 years, make tens of millions and hundreds of millions of dollars, be the highest paid player in the league, um, you know, big house, white face, you know, all that. I had this whole vision. Um, so when it didn't happen, or when the draft came, and I didn't get drafted, I'm like, every pick. From first pick to the last pick. So I'm like, Chris, he didn't watch the first two rounds. I, I thought it was a chance for the first two rounds, honestly. <laughs> like, sitting there, like, all ready. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I haven't watched the draft since. Yeah, I'm not gonna ever watch the draft again. <laughs> um, but essentially, I watched every single pick, um, and then I realized, like, okay, you know, there was a chip on my shoulder because, to us, be honest, the people that got drafted in front of better than me. You know what I'm saying? That's, the, that's just a, the fact of the, of the situation. Um, but ultimately, I had to start over and I had to, you know, figure out how things go or how to, how to gain my respect. But I, I took it in the wrong direction where I was trying to um, basically kill anything moving. Um, and I didn't, I didn't gain relationships. I didn't, I, you know, I would, I would cuss the coach out. Like, it was, a, it was me against everybody at that point when I felt like, you know, things went my, what weren't going my way. Um, so my transition was really tough. Um, I was on the Washington Redskins uh, for three seasons, and uh, essentially they kept on bringing me up and really taking me down. You go up to the 53, you come down to the practice squad. You go up to the 53, you come down to the practice squad. I did that for three years. And that's one of the toughest things in life is trying to stay prepared when you don't know what the future holds. Um, trying to stay prepared to be at your best when you're not sure what's next for you. Um, so in that space, they called me one more time and I said, listen, don't call me back. You know what I'm saying? And I said, don't call me back. I don't want to hear from you no more. I'm good. So I'm thinking I got every single, every single, every single team in the league uh, waiting, to, waiting to pick me up. Uh, and then I had to eventually crawl back to the rest of the I'm still looking for a corner. You know what I'm saying? I'm still looking for a corner. So uh, after the answer was no, I uh, burned all my bridges. Basically, I was in a year of trying to figure out what's next, who am I, what am I, my identity has always been football. I went to a full cleanse, um, I deleted all my football pictures on Instagram, Twitter, like I had to change my identity of who I was, um, and I haven't looked back since. Um, but what I did realize is the fact that um, the same things that make me great at what I did in football, the same things that make me great in business and entrepreneurship. Um, so, that's a good thing. I appreciate everybody's story. That's one of the things I try to focus on is the transition because I know uh, how, how tough it was for me to figure out what, who I am and what I am after football is over. Uh, so I appreciate you guys sharing your stories in that space. Uh, before we get to our last couple questions, do we have any uh, questions from the crowd? Yeah, we have a couple questions from the crowd, so I think this is a good one. Um, what quality do you think a college athlete must possess? You know, either by coming in, or in their college to be able to make the most of their four years of being both a student and an athlete. I know we kind of touched on this. And then, uh, what qualities do you feel like are either exemplified and are hard to learn in a hard way? I feel like uh, the important quality is you got to come in, you got to be confident, uh, you got to be coachable, and you just can't be scared. Uh, can't be scared when it comes to being on the field. Can't be scared, you know, when it comes to uh, being out, being social, the rest of campus, the rest of the university. I, I have to say you have to be very mindful. You, know, you have to be aware, like uh, I think everybody said earlier, everybody's good. Man. They, they bring, you got guys ahead of you, you got guys below you, you got guys coming in. And if you don't make those plays, uh, the next man makes them up. They're all going to replace you. Uh, and a lot of stuff like discipline, you know, like creating teams. You know, a lot of stuff that I know now, 
I wish I would have been able to translate some of that stuff as a student athlete. And I, I'll highlight Chase if it was supposed to. But from a discipline standpoint, Chase really was the example of what a student athlete should be. He's humble as can be. But he was represented, he was like a high, high, high level of the day after graduation. And when he was a freshman, I saw it firsthand when he was actually studying. He was actually performing. Like, I went to the room and I said, I was, I was confused, literally. He studied. I asked him, because we don't know. We don't go in class, and we don't know. We just kind of live. So, yeah, I just got this thing. Take care of business at all times. Take care of your problems. Be mindful. For me, I would say um, the best body is, is a body to be able to understand the sacrifice. Um, because if you want to do anything at a high level, you're going to have to sacrifice things um, that other people who aren't doing it at a high level aren't sacrificing. Um, so the ability to sacrifice, whether it's going out, whether it's drinking, whether it's, um, you know, whatever you got to figure out. I, I try to tell people all the time, if you want to be the best, that whatever you do, you got to find the thing that separates you. Uh, and the thing that separates you is probably what to do what other people want to do. Uh, so that's probably what I was saying. I would say be prepared for the unprepared. Um, I, I, thought, I thought I knew I was going to be, you know, I never think when I was coming in, um, you know, a lot of us did when we were young. Uh, you know, you couldn't really tell us nothing. Um, you know, we knew it all, we could handle it all, and we were prepared for it all. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a big culture shock, not in a bad way, but you just don't really understand what, what it takes to be a college athlete when you're a high school athlete. So, to be prepared for the parents, you really don't really know. One more question, and then we'll be ready to wrap it up. Go ahead. All right, uh, let's see, we got a couple of these good ones. Uh, boom, okay. Uh, is the business school of Dart and MBA program student athletes at the conclusion of the amateur career? Um, I'll start off, none of, at the end of my amateur career, no schools are really pushed. Um, honestly, I thought about going back to school a couple of times, and I didn't even know how to take out a student loan, to be honest. So one of the benefits of being a college athlete is you don't have to worry about student loans. Uh, honestly, I didn't know how to apply to school. Um, you know, they basically came in and were like, here's your scholarship, uh, here's the uh, application process. Uh, you have to write like a, a paragraph of why you want to come to the school, and I think that's all I did in that application process. So I didn't know anything about applying to the school, applying for loans, or anything like that. Uh, so, you know, when, you, when you're done, uh, you know, they, unfortunately they, they have, you know, a new batch of 24 kids coming every year, 24, 30 kids coming every year. They don't have the time, they gotta worry about them and their jobs, so it's kind of like when you're done, you can pretty much on your own. I think, I think that's one thing that colleges can do better. I think colleges can work on a program that when athletes don't make it to the NFL, then they have something to push for them to figure out what they want to do next. Um, right now, you graduate and you go to the curve. The NFL, they do a program like that where you can go back to school, uh, you can figure out they'll have like mentor programs and things like that. But as far as the kid that didn't get his chance to play in the NFL, uh, there's nothing for you. We gotta figure it out. So that's one thing I think colleges can do better. Yeah, that's what's going on I agree with that 100%. That's what I had like, as a CEO. I, I try to really start younger. And we've created so many different jobs and internship categories to try to get you to be aware of those things. Because we get there, we don't know. And then we're just we're there. And I want you all, if you start the kids understanding the value of uh, work ethic and trying to find something that you love and you're passionate understand the way the economy flows, and understand your business. And just being uh, exposed to different uh, different fields, you kind of have a head start, so when you get to college, you kind of actually have a plan. And we didn't really have a lot of systems in place. Like I said, as our company with VSP, we're really trying to bridge the gap in the local communities and try to just, just push that, do a better job, and just educate the uh, communities. Start going. Got any questions? Good. All right, bro. Alright, let me get this This is a good one. I think we all struggle with this, but what is the best advice you can give to a young professional who's unsure about what they want to do out of their career? For me? Go ahead, start, Jay. Go ahead, start. What I figured out I was good at was figuring out how to make money. Uh, so we actually having this conversation on the table before we started the podcast. I was like, I had to learn in business to quit trying to tell people what I do or what I what I can help you to figure out what you want. What do you want? I figure out what you want, and then I figure out how I can do that. Um, that's what I would. That's what I would tell people with advice as far as I figure out what to do. That. So do what supply and demand. It's taking out. It's weird. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, if people need it, you can do it. I guess I got that too. I find your passion. You know, like every, every day I work 18, 20 hours a day. 
Um, and, but I'm doing something that I love. And so I get tired, but I'm actually enjoying what I do. Um, what I would really advise, to be honest, is to find, find a successful mentor. Find someone that's kind of done it before you. Like read books, like be, be proactive, go up to people, like network, like really try hard to find people that can help you bridge the gap and find what you really need to do. Create strategy, like don't just be out here like just going through emotions. Like wisest people find ways to be successful. A lot of that time is opening your mouth, sending emails, going to networking events, and uh, utilizing your resources. Um, as a young professional right now, uh, I'm definitely still learning, but one thing I can say, uh, don't think you know it. Uh, always, always be willing to take advice, uh, learn from others, especially the ones that have done it many years before you. Uh, you know, don't be too proud to ask for help. Uh, the website is getting uh, 
Maybe the email as well is on the database. Contact at the means I don't know how to run things. Can we give a guess a hand? I appreciate it.